Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of the glory days of the Houston Oilers, what are some things that come to mind? You think of the late 70s and the Love You Blue and the Astrodome rocking every single game, to the point where it was one of the most intimidating atmospheres for any team in the league to play in. You think of Bum Phillips, the unconventional head coach that truly embodied the spirit of the team and the fan base, and could coach a heck of a defense. You think of Earl Campbell, one of the greatest running backs of all time, just bowling over people and winning Offensive Player of the Year three times in his first three seasons. And then, you have this man right here. You have the quarterback during those golden years in Dan Pastorini. Perhaps the peak of the Oilers in the post-merger era was on New Year's Eve in 1978, when the divisional round against the New England Patriots, Pastorini put on a show. But the road to get there was incredibly shaky and rocky, because not even three months before this game, Pastorini nearly quit the team. Tensions between he and offensive coordinator Ken Shipp reached their boiling point, and this is the story behind the drama of the 1978 Houston Oilers. Before I talk about the drama itself and what led to Pastorini reaching his breaking point, we need some context to understand the player in question, as well as the events and the game leading up to everything. Much like 1999 and 2021, the 1971 NFL Draft was top-heavy at the quarterback position. Jim Plunkett went first overall to the newly named New England Patriots, Archie Manning went second overall to the New Orleans Saints, and Dan Pastorini went third overall to the Houston Oilers. However, let's just say that the start of Pastorini's career was not very good, and he was looking like he was on his way to becoming a colossal bust. In 1972 and 1973, he was part of the worst teams in Oilers history. In the 22 games he started, he went 1-21 while throwing 12 touchdowns and 29 picks, all while taking 67 sacks. Having said that, some quarterbacks take longer to find their footing than others, and fortunately for Oilers fans, Pastorini, along with the team, would begin to turn things around. Over his final nine starts of the 1974 season, he threw 10 touchdowns to just six interceptions, winning six of his final eight games and posting a pass rating of 80.9, which if extrapolated to a full season, would have been tied for eighth in the league alongside Pro Bowler Bob Reese. He followed that up in 1975 with a Pro Bowl appearance, the first and only of his career, and for helping guide the Oilers to a shocking 10-4 record under first-year head coach Bum Phillips. And during that 1975 season, he led four game-winning drives in the fourth quarter, which was the most of any quarterback in football. I don't think anyone was going to pretend that Dan Pastorini was one of the best quarterbacks in football, because he wasn't. If the top tier guys during the mid to late 70s consisted of players like Ken Anderson, Burt Jones, Terry Bradshaw, and Roger Staubach, obviously there was no way that Pastorini could be put in there. But Pastorini had proven himself to be a solid quarterback who could help his team win some games, and as shown through performances like his three-touchdown game against the Raiders in 1975, where he threw the game-winning touchdown on the final play of the game, could make magic happen from time to time. But even though he was playing well with Phillips in charge, it was not exactly smooth sailing for Pastorini and the staff. After the 1976 season, following a year where the Oilers finished 22nd in the league in total offense, Bum Phillips demoted offensive coordinator King Hill to the role of wide receivers coach, and hired a new offensive coordinator named Ken Shipp. Shipp was the offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions the year before, and before his time as the Oilers head coach, was perhaps best known for serving five games as the interim head coach of the New York Jets in 1975. I talked a bit about how he got that job, or rather, how the head coach he took over for got fired, so if you want to learn more about that bizarre incident, they clicked the card in the upper right corner. And let's just say that Ship and Pastorini did not get along well at all. Ideally, you want your quarterback and offensive coordinator to be on the same page, since those are the two men primarily responsible for calling the shots. In Houston, that did not happen. Tensions were high right off the bat, as neither Pastorini nor backup quarterback John Hale respected Ship. Pastorini said that he and Hale knew the offense better than Ship did. As Pastorini said on Ship, it was easy to get frustrated with him. He was an X's and O's guy who thought he knew everything there was to know about football because he watched tape back and forth, in slow motion, forward and backwards until his eyes bled. He really didn't know you know what when it came to actually playing the game at full speed. When Ship held the meeting after practice, while Pastorini and Hayden were in a bar, the quarterbacks decided not to go, as they knew it would be a pointless meeting that was just there for the sake of holding a meeting. In the eyes of Pastorini, Ship treated the players like middle schoolers. Pastorini nearly fought Ship during that camp, and if Hale didn't step in to break it up, who knows what would have gone down. Pastorini's relationship with Ship did not improve at all throughout the 1977 season. A film session at one point in the season went so bad to the point where Pastorini yanked the clicker from Ship's hands, cursed him out, and then walked out of the room. The Oilers finished 8-6 and six and had the third best offense of the AFC, but still missed the postseason. Pastorini said on Ship, he just had this power trip thing going, 
but he had to show me how much football he knew. But as bad as the relationship between the two men was, as we would find out in September of the 1978 season, it was about to get a whole lot worse. September 24th, 1978. It's week four of the season, and we've got a big game on our hands of the Houston Astrodome between the Houston Oilers and the Los Angeles Rams. For the Oilers, it looks like there's going to be no room for error if they want a fighting chance at winning the AFC Central, as through the first three weeks, both the Pittsburgh Steelers and Cleveland Browns are 3 0, showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon. A win here by Houston keeps them in striking distance at the quarter pole. As for the Rams, they're 3 0, and with every other team in the NFC West below 500, they have a shot to blow this division wide open. Both of these teams were expected to fight for playoff spots in 1978, and with a combined 5 1 record between the two of them, they're certainly living up to expectations. And to start things off, this game was the definition of a low-scoring affair. After the Oilers put on their first drive of the game, the Rams get the ball to find the end zone on their first drive, with Colin Bryan punching it in from three yards out to give Los Angeles a 7-0 lead. From there, neither team would find the end zone the rest of the day. Houston finished the game with just 10 first downs. Earl Campbell averaged over 5.9 yards per carry because he was an absolute beast, but outside of him, the Oilers offense got nothing going, as the Oilers could only muster up two field goals with Tony Fresh hitting a 32-yard field goal in the second quarter to cut it to a 10-3 deficit, and hitting a 20-yarder in the fourth to make it 10-6. The Oilers get the ball back midway through the fourth quarter after a fumble recovery, and it seems as though the momentum is on Houston's side. After picking up a first down, the Oilers have the ball near midfield. That's when Pastorini decides to take a deep shot down the field as he looks for his intended target, Ken Burrow. The only problem? He's completely blanketed. There are multiple defenders on him, and Pat Thomas winds up making the interception much to the dismay of Oiler fans who begin to boo. The Rams keep the ball for the rest of the game by running out the clock, winning at 10-6. For the Oilers, this was a brutal loss, coupled with a brutal decision by Pastorini. And the day after the game, everything fell apart. There's one important thing to keep in mind about the interception that Pastorini threw. He never wanted to call that play, and never wanted to throw that pass. Houston was having success running the ball, and Pastorini wanted the team to keep running it. But Ship sent that play in, even though the safeties were deep, and even though the interception happening with that coverage and that route was incredibly predictable. Which is why Tuesday morning, when Pastorini opened the newspaper and saw Ship saying, I don't know why Pastorini called that play, he completely hit his breaking point. Pastorini stormed into Houston's facility at 6.30 a.m., and in front of the whole team, cussed out Ship for not only calling the play, but then for throwing the blame on him. Pastorini said, when this is done, we'll see who is left standing. Then Pastorini met with Bum Phillips. Bum tried to get Pastorini to come to the team meeting, but Pastorini refused, saying, I think you either need to get rid of Ship or play backup quarterback Gifford Nielsen. I can't play for him anymore. And with that, Pastorini walked out of the team facility, with his last words to Bum being, Do what you gotta do, boss. Some reports say that the last words he said was the repetition of the phrase, Trade me, over and over again. Whatever the case, Pastorini was fuming and left the facility accordingly. Pastorini knew that team officials would be looking for him at his apartment, so he decided to spend the day dove hunting, with no one knowing where he was. It even got to a point where one radio station said on Pastorini, his whereabouts are unknown. If you see him, call the station. When Phillips was asked about this and whether Pastorini would be back, he didn't seem too concerned that this was Pastorini leaving for good, as he said, I'm betting my job on it. Because Phillips knew just what he had to do. After Pastorini got home from a long day of dove hunting, at 9 p.m., Phillips was waiting in Pastorini's driveway, and as Pastorini was venting to him, Bum completely took his side. When Pastorini asked Bum why he couldn't make King Hill in charge of the offense again, Bum responded, that's what I'm gonna do. And the next day, Bum relieved Ship of his duties as the offensive coordinator, saying, I need my starting quarterback more than I need you as my offensive coordinator. So just to recap where we are in the story right now, Pastorini was being blamed for calling a play that he didn't actually call. The offensive coordinator, who was already on incredibly shaky ground with Pastorini to begin with, was throwing his quarterback under the bus. Pastorini got so fed up that he left the team for the day, and nobody knew his whereabouts. And the situation ended with the offensive coordinator getting fired. This was a highly dramatic and dysfunctional situation. But the end result? As Pastorini would later say, the day Phillips fired ship was the day the Oilers became a dominant team. Pastorini returned to the team the next day and cleared things up with the media, saying that he had no idea why Ship threw him under the bus when this was completely his idea, and he did not respect being called out publicly. However, he expressed optimism that everything was going to be better. And sure enough, he was right. The Oilers would finish that season at 
They had a stretch where they won four straight games, including a four touchdown performance on Monday Night Football against the Miami Dolphins that is arguably the greatest game by a running back in Monday Night history, as Earl Campbell scored four touchdowns and racked up 199 yards. And eventually, the Oilers made the postseason and made it all the way to the AFC Championship, where they would lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Houston made it back to the AFC Championship in 1979, but this time would do it with Bum Phillips as the offensive coordinator, as Ken Shipp was no longer on the staff. Nor would Shipp ever find another job in the NFL again after that whole ordeal. After the 1979 season ended, in one of the most iconic trades in NFL history, Pastorini was shipped off to the Oakland Raiders in exchange for Ken Stabler. Pastorini didn't do a whole lot after leaving Houston, starting just five games for the Raiders, but having an awful year in Los Angeles with the Rams in 1981 by throwing two touchdowns and 14 interceptions while posting a season-long passer rating of 22.9, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. Pastorini would be out of the NFL by the time the 1983 season ended. Having said that, this blow-up that took place in 1978 was nothing short of crazy. For the offensive coordinator to call out his quarterback, for the quarterback to quit and demand a trade, and then for the offensive coordinator to be fired all in the span of about 15 hours is insane. However, that blow-up might have been necessary to ensure Houston's success in the league that season and to close out the decade. Things reached their breaking point, but what could have been a major oil crisis turned out to save not only Dan Pastorini's career, but the Love You Blue as well. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed out to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.